broadcasting from the studios of Business Radio X, it's time for Laser Life Insights. This show is brought to you by Sumus Medical Laser, changing lives with the power of light. Now, here's your host, Pete Cousins. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Pete Cousins. Happy Friday, the last Friday of May. Can't believe how fast the early summer is already flying by, but here we are for another episode of Laser Life Insights, and I'm very excited this afternoon to be talking with uh, Dr. Kyle Jones. Dr. Jones is actually the, the founder and medical director of Carolina's Chiropractic and Spinal Rehab, which is located up in the greater Charlotte, North Carolina area. He opened way back in 2009 and has since expanded to two locations. So he's got two brick and mortar locations as of uh, 2022. Dr. Jones was a former collegiate athlete. He was an anatomy and physiology instructor, as well as the official chiropractor for the JTG Doherty Racing on the NASCAR circuit. Very impressive. Can't wait to talk a little bit about that. Um, Over the years, Dr. Jones has mentored uh, many different chiropractic students, And he's also preceptored interns completing clinical hours uh, within his practice. He's got an integrative approach to the treatment of spinal-related conditions, which has helped him earn the respect of healthcare professionals all over the Charlotte area. He's got a passion to help people live long and healthy and natural. So we're excited. Couldn't be a a better guest to have. Uh, Dr. Jones, welcome. Happy Friday. Thanks for having me, Pete. Looking forward to the discussion. Yeah, me too. Me too. So I always like to start at ground zero kind of and just get a sense for your story and tell us maybe a bit about how you first ended up becoming a chiropractor. And then as you've evolved your kind of focus within the practice, how has that kind of happened over the years? Yeah, it was early. As far back as my parents said, almost in second grade that I was talking to them about wanting to be in healthcare at that point. I probably didn't know much, but just said I wanted to be a doctor of some sort. And sure enough, as I went further along in life and into advanced biology courses in high school, uh, it definitely caught my attention, uh, especially in in high school. Like I said, uh, once we went into advanced biology, started studying animals and different things, I knew that the human body was where I needed to be. And so went to school, college to study biology. So I was a a biology major and I was still going back and forth whether I wanted to do something chiropractic because I knew that was on my radar or whether I wanted to go the traditional medical route. And it wasn't until I was a sophomore in college, I was preparing a little bit for the MCAT and I realized I had a, an upper back injury that it was just lingering and nagging and couldn't really get it to go away. I'd seen several different providers and was doing my own home care stuff, probably not stretching like I was supposed to because I was a college kid, obviously, but ended up seeking out the help of a local chiropractor right next down the street from Webster University. And he adjusted my neck three or four times and the pain went away. And so it, it definitely, obviously at that point was what made me realize this is what I want to be. I love working with my hands. I'm a typically a very holistic type of person. I would rather try to figure something out naturally first before medication. And I definitely landed in the right spot. I know that I'm where I should be. And so that's, that's a story. And so on to Logan university where I studied there and then here we are. Yeah, it's been fantastic. I hear so many stories like that where something personally occurred in in someone's life and that kind of pointed them in the right direction. So glad that you answered the calling for sure. I, I can't imagine how many patients you've helped over the years. It's been quite a while. As you got into practice, would you say that you were more of the traditional chiropractic adjustment focused type of provider? Or had you always from the very beginning, leaned into unique and innovative ways uh, to care for the patients. Interestingly, whenever I was coming out of school, there was a lot more just newer hands-on manual therapy types of things, such as ART, myofascial release, but it was still manual, it was still hands-on. So the chiropractic, they were developing different types of table-assisted adjusting and instrument-assisted adjusting, but really a lot of the technology hadn't shown up yet. We're talking almost 20 years ago. And we had the standard muscle stimulation and ultrasounds and things of that sort. But I knew coming out, I wanted to work with my hands. I wasn't an instrument guy. So I started to really try to learn the processes of aggressive, not aggressive, I shouldn't say that, but manual manipulation, like the traditional manual manipulation. I wanted to move the spine and got that to where I was at a point, not mastering because you never master something, but where I felt very comfortable. And that was a big part of my practice. So to answer that question, yeah, I, I did. I wanted to be 
more of a traditional chiropractor, but I've always been one that was just interested in new things that come out. And so anything I'd see, I'd explore it. And if that caught my eye, then uh, I would continue to dive into it and see where it helped. And my number one, it has to help people. It has to help people and it has to stand the test of time. That's what has been my biggest thing. And I also just really prefer to, like I said, try to figure out the way of doing something naturally first versus jumping into some sort of more medication approach or the more allopathic type of thing, which is unique because my wife's a pharmacist. So we have great discussion. <laughs> I was just going to ask about that. I'm sure that provides for some healthy conversation about what's the best course of action. As you look at the complete picture with your patients, do you get into nutritional counseling and other kind of aspects of the patient's lifestyle to help them achieve their best outcomes? Or do you have a partnership that you refer into for those different types of things? Absolutely. And we we always try to work with the person, broad range and the whole body, keep them at holistic as possible. I am by no means an expert at every little thing. Honestly, I could probably build a practice on L5 discs and just treat L5 discs because that's what I truly love. And I feel like that's what I'm the best at, but there's a nutritional component to everything. And so I talk to them about what are you eating? What is a normal? Are you drinking tons of sodas? Are you using artificial sweeteners? Are you drinking plenty of water? These types of things. So I try to be more surface level with them. And amazingly, little surface level changes make drastic results in patients and just trying to open their eyes to it. And the other thing too, is you've got to be receptive or they have to be receptive to it. And I learned a long time ago that I could have an idea of what I think needs to be done, but I've got to meet them where they are. And otherwise you're going to lose them because if I try to drive it home immediately of you need to change X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. And then they don't do any of it. They just give up, right? Because it's too daunting. So we try to, because another thing that obviously weight is a, a big factor in some lower back issues, right? They started having back pain maybe six weeks ago. They were still the same weight six weeks ago. So I'm not going to talk to them about weight day one. Let's get the lower back pain under control, whatever that, whether it's a facet or whether it's a disc or a muscle or a SI joint. And then we'll start talking about some lifestyle things if you're interested in that. Sure. Absolutely. Moving on to laser. I know it's been almost 10 years ago that you first started using uh, a laser and tell us the story. Like, how did you find out about it? And then how did you really vet it out to make sure it was like you said, going to stand the test of time for you and get the outcomes you're looking for your patients? It's interesting because I started with a fixed wavelength Apollo laser. And I don't know if you've seen these and I'm so glad that they were available because it was just something that was within my price range because my practice wasn't where it is today. And I was really price conscious and also introducing something, a new technology or a new service to a, a growing practice. You can get a little nervous on how the patients are going to receive that. And are we just trying to be sold something? And is this something that's actually going to benefit us or is this hogwash type of thing? Nice. And I, I wish I could tell you exactly where I ran into the Apollo laser. I don't even know. The, and so I, I feel like I was touched or introduced to it maybe at a trade show. And I was like, that's interesting. And so then as I come to the end of the year and thought that I needed to add something to the practice, that was my first option. And we started treating it. There were no fancy carts. There were no, the aesthetics of this thing was horrible. Again, it was fixed wavelength. I think I was calculating how to actually apply this to the body based on things that I had read and research. And we had it on an old, but not an old, it was new. I bought it, but it was a construction cart yeah. because I didn't know what else to move it around the office with. But to fast forward, we had started seeing enough results. And, and I, the thing that I love the most is I had a solid eight years of practice and treating these conditions without it. And that gave me an idea of truly what it, what was the standard as far as somebody coming in with acute low back pain. And so would it take three or four weeks to fully resolve this type of thing? What did an ankle sprain of a kid that was an athlete in the area, what did that take with the standard of care that I had prior to that? And so we were able to compare those first eight years, so to speak, to then the addition of fixed wavelength laser. And sure enough, it was better. And so then I was able to justify the cost and the integration creation of all this, the class four cold lasers, much more expensive, a bigger investment, a bigger training, a bit, all of it. Mm -hmm. And so then once we got the class four cold laser that you guys produce, it's been, it's just night and day. It's night and day. And I tell people this all the time is that if you're motivated to get better as fast as you can, then you're missing out if we don't do this. 
And 95% of the time, they are thanking me for recommending the, the laser. Yeah, it's very rare that you don't have someone thankful that you introduce them to it. On the front end, though, oftentimes, I'm sure you deal with this, and I, I see it a lot in um, just visiting different clinics. The patient is in perhaps an extreme level of discomfort, and it's affecting their quality of life. So we know they want a solution as soon as possible. Yet when you start to talk to them about something that they've A, never heard of, uh, and therefore B, have no kind of perspective on when it comes to lasering, how do you talk to your patients through that process? Especially as I think about maybe patients who had been with you for five, six, seven, eight years without laser, and all of a sudden they have something going on and you introduce them to this new potential tool or modality, and they're a little bit skeptical. How do you handle that? How do you bring them around? It's a great question. And fortunately now, and I'm going to start now versus what we had to do yet several years ago. Now, fortunately, there are videos and there are there's all kinds of things online that are actually educating patients on the use of light, whether it's laser or just red light therapy. So I'll tell you today, it is so much easier than it was eight years ago. I felt like we were the pioneers of this type of thing. And I know we weren't, but I felt like that. Mm -hmm. But so anyway, I go into stories. I talk to them about plants and trees or how they are, they have to have sunlight, Right. And so what happens to a plant or a tree whenever they you remove those or flowers, you remove them from the sun, they don't do well. And so then I go into that there are photoreceptors in the cells of the human body. And fortunately, smarter people than me, scientists have figured out which wavelengths of light actually stimulate those photoreceptors. And then ultimately that supercharge gives an external energy source to, to supercharge the cell and it drives them through the inflammatory phase faster. And it's also an educational piece for me. And I start going into ibuprofen and the NSAIDs and the over-the-counter medications, as well as some of the more aggressive steroids and whatnot, and how they actually shut off the inflammatory response and how that's not actually what you need. You need inflammation. That's how the body heals itself. And so we have two options. You shut it off, which is going to prevent the body from healing the way it's supposed to, or we have this new tool that actually will accelerate that healing process. It'll drive you through the inflammatory phase faster. So when that takes place, then ultimately the body does what it's supposed to, and it heals, the tissue heals to its maximum capability, but then it also, it happens faster. So the first thing I ask them too, if they come in with an injury, I'm like, how much time do you have? And they're like, what do you mean? Are you traveling next week? And oftentimes people are like, oh yeah, I'm going to my aunt's house in whatever, New York. So I'm going to be gone for a week. So I'm not going to have you better in a week if we just do standard adjustments. There's, I, I wish I could tell you I could, but it's just the reality of it. I do have a machine that's going to help expedite that process so that by the end of this week, you're going to be 50, 60% better. I'm not telling you you're going to be resolved, but you'll be tremendously better. And then ultimately, then when you get back, then we'll work on fixing the problem. And sure. it's amazing how many people said, absolutely. Like, I want that option. Sure. And, you know, and, we, and be, prior to the laser we would continue to do giving people as many options as they can. I'm not against medication. I just want to use it at the right time in the right place. And so we would get patients that would come in, in a similar situation. And so then we'd have to refer them out to their primary and say, talk to them, tell them you have this, and then figure out what medication is the best, whether it is a dose pack of prednisone, or if you want to just stay at home and do over-the-counter medication, those types of things. But we're getting people to treat the, because we know that all these medications, yeah, they have benefit, but they also have side effects. And so we're, we're where we know now the laser and the lights is extremely safe. So we try to keep them out of those, the, the world of side effect. Yeah. That's always a, a, a big key. Is it, is it going to, is it going to be safe? Is it going to be effective is certainly everyone's number one question, but I'm, I'm surprised, I guess, again, because people don't have the perspective or the background, how many people ask if it's safe enough for them to consider. So obviously we're thankful it really is. So I, I mentioned this when I introduced you that you were the official chiropractor for a NASCAR team for a couple of years. That's got to be a great story. How'd that happen? And then I'm always curious, like any chance you ever lasered anybody on that racing team? <laughs> and so I'll answer the first part. I got introduced to one of the owners of the team and they were actually visiting me for a problem driving quite a way to get to the office. And so fortunately it worked out and whatever I did to him actually helped him. So he was pretty excited about it. And then he finally looked at me and said, Kyle, you, I really appreciate what you're doing, but this drive is horrible. And so I need you to start coming to me. 
<laughs> and invited me up and we actually did a, a tour of the facility. And so we figured out something that could work because it was pulling me out of my office. And so we had to figure out something from a compensatory standpoint that made sense. And I was able to go up there every Tuesday morning for about four hours. And it was such an awesome experience. The We were able to, I was able to get to know, I took one staff member with me and they actually bought the equipment and it was just a chiropractic and a muscle stem type of thing. I don't think he was ready to spend the amount of money on a laser for just his staff. But anyway, we, so I would go up there every single Tuesday and we would treat, basically, it was amazing. This team, the owners, the people, just an amazing group of people treated this 120 person company like a family and anybody was open to it from the janitor to the owner. They didn't care. So mm-hmm. anybody that needed to do it was willing to, they were willing to pay for it. Mm-hmm. And I'd go up there on Tuesdays. Some Tuesdays were better than others because I would watch the race on a Sunday. And if they wrecked out in the fifth lap, it was not a fun Tuesday. <laughs> but if they finished in the top 10, I think everybody was happy. And so it made it a little easier. And that that confirmed a lot of the issues that we deal with as humans. They may be psychosocial, right? Or sure. psychosomatic, I should say, sure. because the stress definitely plays into it. But to answer your question about the laser, um, unfortunately we, because the office was still open. So I had to keep the laser in the office taking care of the, those patients. And so I wasn't taking that up. Um, but I will tell you if I would have, was able to have multiple units, um, those, uh, the pit crew guys, the amount of injuries, everything hurts on that. I don't know if you've seen them but jump over the wall and slide. And mm-hmm. I, it's incredible what these guys do. And I will tell you, I'm not a huge car guy. I'd never have been but I'm a big sports guy, but as far as the, just the respect for what they do to get these cars on the track every single week, what these drivers are capable of. I got to do a ride along at one point and it's just, it's incredible. It's incredible. I can't imagine that going hundred, what, 120, 130, something like that. Probably (laughs) they're doing on the super speedways. They're doing almost 200. Oh man. It's incredible. That's fast enough for sure. Yeah. Cool. So that's a really interesting tidbit. I know also you mentioned you're real competitive and you're into sports. I know you have a bit of a golf background. Any chance you've had any any interactions with any PGA players in your professional career? No PGA Tour players, but NBA, major leagues, and then NFL. And so awesome. it's been a lot of fun. And it's interesting too, because you would think that the bigger, the stronger, the more difficult they are to treat, but it's actually the opposite of that. Their bodies are so fine-tuned mm-hmm. that it, it takes little bitty changes for them to see, to, to realize extreme benefit. And that's that whole 0.1% thing. The, what are you doing that I'm not? So the, all those people in the professional world are so gifted physically, mentally, all of it. And so that one little extra thing that puts them over the top can make them better than the rest of the people around them since you asked, I actually have realized I enjoy treating a mom that can't pick up her kids more than a professional athlete. And this is every, everybody's in, it's different. I enjoy a a grandmother or grandfather that can't get down on the floor and play with their grandkids. I actually get more joy out of taking care of those people in their day-to-day life than I did for the the professional athletes. And that's just, I don't know where I found myself in my career and my practice. I love it. That's fantastic. And I'm sure that shines through when you're with the patients, no doubt. So you've done so well since you left Logan and started your first practice that you've grown into a, a second location. Is there any different any different focus within the, the second location? Everything just replicated exactly the way it was in the first? Or tell us a little bit about that. You know, and I'm learning this, but exact is probably not the the right way. I continue to grow as a, a provider, but also as a, I just happen to be the founder. So I tend to be the, the leadership in this company and we have some other people that are helping, but it's very interesting because I was hands-on when I grew the first one, I did it all. I was, ans- I legit answered the phones and did your billing and scheduled your appointment and adjusted the patients and then put them on therapy and so on and so forth. And now I may go two weeks without even going to that location. And so to see that whole process and to help lead and guide just from afar, but as far as equipment goes and what our, I would say what our brand, how we approach uh, musculoskeletal injuries, we're trying to replicate that. Mm -hmm. And we have four doctors that are between the two locations that are all very like-minded. We love to, uh, like I said, attack and approach the body in the same way. The rest of the staff from a customer service standpoint that everybody's on board. 
And I think that's the key is that we're trying to replicate this brand. And so people can, they get used to a certain type of service. It doesn't matter where they go. And we've seen that to be extremely beneficial. And fortunately they're growing. And I laugh because they're growing way faster than I did by myself. And maybe I was the problem. I don't know, but it's been fun to see them working hard and continuing to grow. And my, I, it's probably because they have a laser and a decompression table and a flexion distraction table and a digital x-ray. And they have all these things that I didn't get to have whenever I started. <laughs> sure, sure. That definitely doesn't hurt. That definitely doesn't hurt. When you think about being a business owner and now you've got what over a dozen employees on the team, what are some of the, what would you say are the keys to your success as a business owner, regardless of being a healthcare provider? You know, what could you put your finger on some of the things that have led to your success? I don't know. The area that we're in, Charlotte's an amazing place. Um, my joke is that you could probably be mediocre at something and do really well here. Um, just because the city has just grown tremendously since we landed it here in 2008. But uh, my mom was a teacher. My dad was a small town business owner. And so I got to watch two very different people as far as from a career standpoint. And I tell staff this all the time is that I, I open this practice to be run with the heart of a fifth grade teacher and the customer service of a small town business owner. And so if we stay at that, I think that ultimately the rest takes care of itself. Chiropractic works. It's worked for a hundred years. It's going to continue to work, right? Every single human on this planet has a spine. So there, we're not going to run out of those. And mm -hmm. so if we continue to treat people the way that they need to be treated, then there's no issue. And I've always, if a person walks in and they need two treatments or one treatment, if it's a kid that slept wrong or tweaked their back on a trampoline and they need to be adjusted one time, we adjust them one time and say, come back if you need us type of thing. Mm -hmm. If you have a 75 year old lady that is pain down her leg and she's a mess because of stenosis or some sort of major arthritic issue, then we'll treat them for six or eight weeks with decompression laser with flexion distraction. And we go at it aggressively, but anyway, treating them with what they need versus having some sort of templated type of thing when they walk in the door. And so we've been, we're fortunate. And uh, again, it's been a, it's been a fun ride. We're not done. Not done. Not done yet. Not do done. You, we're not do done. You plans, do you have plans for more locations or is two enough? What's interesting, I don't know. I would love to. It's more about just continuing to provide this. It, it's getting to the point now where I want to continue to represent the profession because I know what it's capable of. And I want more people to have quality access to ex real high quality chiropractic care. And so what does that look like? And now I will say that I opened, and I'm not afraid to share this. I opened, I borrowed some money from my parents and opened my first practice for $23,000. Mm -hmm. I had a flat Thomas table and a muscle stem and that was it. And mm -hmm. now I've been running the numbers and for another location, if I was to do that in the next year or two, it's, it, we're talking a couple hundred thousand dollars. So it's just a very different environment. And so it just depends on how I want to, how much I want to bite off. Yeah. Always the question. So growth becomes more and more challenging as you move along. Let's pivot for a second into what you've recently gotten into along the lines of light therapy. The new Sumus Vita bed is something that I think you just brought on not only, what, a couple months ago, and I know that it's been quite successful for you. So I'm just curious, a uh, couple things. How did you come to decide that was a good, a good service to start offering? And then two, how have you successfully integrated it into the rest of what you're doing in the practice? I'm going to answer it and I'm going to just go back just a little bit. And the reason why is because it'll let you know how I've continued to grow. And I started with a flat Thomas table, right? And I realized the the holes with in my practice and the limitations of the ability to treat people with certain things. So then I added a flexion distraction table and that took me to another level with lower back lumbar disc issues. And then realized there's also this extra technology out there that helps with ridiculous symptoms known as a decompression table. So I added that. And then I realized people coming in day one with acute injuries, they needed something to get them out of pain very quickly. And the chiropractic just wasn't enough. They couldn't be down for two weeks. So that's whenever the laser came about. And so then I was able to quickly start to mitigate that pain and then get them into where we're in the restorative portion of their care and actually functionally and structurally restore their body. So then it's interesting too, because about five years ago, I remember this lady, she said, that laser is so awesome. Can you put it on the top of my head and the bottom of my feet? And I was like, no, but 
I'd love to be able to. And right. so then we fast forward and you start to see little bits of things and different podcasts or some of these really holistic health nuts that are talking about red light therapy. And so it's starting mm-hmm. to gain some steam and different things, but the quality is the biggest issue with me. I, I'm into application. I'm not into the other sides of things. I don't want to do the research. I want you to show me that it works and then I'll work on with the people. I'll be with the people and we'll apply it. And so anyway, so then Sumas came out with this, or I saw late last fall that you guys were toying with it. And then you guys were going to bring this on. And so for me, I've already had a in our office seven years or something of that sort where people are used to the Sumas brand. And so it's going to be an easy transition for them to trust the brand. And so it's the same technology from the laser. And we've been able to apply that to a, a full body application and kind of bathe the body in the LED version of those wavelengths mm-hmm. to ultimately affect them systemically. And the interesting thing too, is that in my deep dive and research, because I'm not just going to throw something at people, I've got to make sure that I'm extremely comfortable with it. And I would do it to myself and I would do it to my kids and I would do it to my parents and so on and so forth, wife, all these types of things. And whenever I was doing my research, since the 1950s, there's been a steady decline in natural sunlight exposure for humans and, and especially Americans. And the number that I actually saw was nearly 93% of the average American's day is spent indoors. And so one of the most vital things that we have on our planet is sunlight and sun exposure. And I I go back to the the ultimate reason why my wife and I left St. Louis after school, because both of us went to school there. We're from the Midwest. We're from outside of St. Louis and ended up seeking Charlotte, Tampa. We were looking at a lot of different places, but landed in Charlotte. And it was the, the long cloudy winters that were really affecting me. And I personally tend to do way better in the bright summer months. I love to go running in the hot sun. It just, it, it charges me. And so once I started to learn about the different wavelengths of light and how now the newer technology is able to remove the UV, which is the harmful component and beneficial, but at a certain point, it can become detrimental or harmful to the body. And then they're still adding in those wavelengths of light that are the red and your infrared that are actually the therapeutic that your body uptakes and actually allows the body to run through numerous processes. Um, once I learned that was a available technology, I, I just had to have one. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. Yeah. And so far, so good. How have you, how have you positioned it as far as a, a service offering for the patients? Is it something that's exclusively separated from the handheld laser treatments? Is it combined? How does that kind of look for you? Yeah. And this is, and I talked back to the patients about any sort of, or sorry, the staff about any new technology that we introduce into the practice you got to bear with me. There's a ramp up phase where basically we're learning how to do it. And the key to this, and this is why I love the laser is there is no side effect. And so there is no side effect to the no known side effects to the light bed. And so for me, it's, I tell them the worst thing is going to happen is nothing. So it it may not, it, and yet we have not had anybody that has done it for a consistent period that has not had benefit. So we've had no one with nothing, which is awesome. And then Mm -hmm. I'll get into all the benefits, which is amazing. But anyway, so that to me was, it's just that peace of mind. And I guess that's who I am too. So I would have failed miserably as a surgeon because unfortunately there are side effects to things like that. And you got to have those people that are willing to have that risk tolerance to be able to go in there and help people. And so that's just not where I lie. But anyways, whenever we bring in the light bed and how do we create treatment plans or how do we recommend these types of things? And if it's a localized issue, like I had a guy this morning, he works out quite a bit and he's had right knee pain. I've given him some home options. The knee pain is not going away. Of course, he's still running six miles a day, which is fine. But I've just told him, I was like, if you're going to keep doing what you're doing, you're going to need a little jump start, something else to get this thing to go away. And so that like that guy, it's an isolated issue. We believe it's a little meniscus. I don't think it's anything that needs aggressive intervention, but he definitely needs more than what he's doing right now or rest, which he's not going to do that again. Mm-hmm. Fine. And we started him on the laser treatment. So we'll do six treatments for three times a week for two weeks. And my assumption with our experience and his level of health and conditioning, he'll be significantly better at that six visit type of point. Now, then another lady today that I was talking to, she's more of a systemic type of person. And I've gotten to the point now where I can look at, look at them and ask them, how much sun exposure do you get in a day? Mm-hmm. And this one, she's, I'm at work from 8 a.m. until five or six 
I come home, I make dinner, I feed the kids, start doing some laundry. And sure enough, it's dark and I go to bed and I do it again. So I'm going to tell you none. Yeah. And if she would have told me a lot, I would have been shocked because she just doesn't have that glow and that look to her, right? That the sun actually gives you. Mm-hmm. And so she was somebody that we're going to start on the telling her, if you can figure this out within your schedule, I think you're going to see tremendous benefits. And those are the people that, yeah, she may be coming in for a little neck pain or a little back pain, but once you dig deeper, okay, so she has chronic migraines and then she has other, oh, my, both of my feet are burning and they've been burning for quite a while. And mm-hmm. all these other systemic issues, my stomach hurts regularly. I think I may have a Crohn's or it, it just, it, it, these comorbidities and you start to see their body hasn't been functioning right for a long time. And I'm not saying you get in the bed and it's going to fix everything. But like I said, I'd be shocked if she gets in there and doesn't feel better after a couple of weeks. No question. We're excited to see how, how your journey with the Vita bed progresses and what you're learning. Hopefully you'll share it with all of us and we can pass it along and, and pay it forward. Um, before I forget, by the way, how can people find you online if they, uh, if patients are listening and they want to try to search you out? We have two locations, Waxhaw, North Carolina and Pineville. They're suburbs of Charlotte. We do have a website, carolinaschiropractic.com. Our telephone number is 704-243-1010. They all link together, so no need to go searching for other things. We're on all the social media platforms. We try to create funny videos, sometimes informative, and just letting people know who we are. And yeah, that's the the best way to, to get in touch with us. Fantastic. I can't believe time is up, but it is. And Dr. Jones, I can't thank you enough for joining us and sharing a little bit of your journey, telling us your story. It's been a lot of fun. I look forward to having you on the show again. And just to remind our listeners, if you are interested in the technologies that Dr. Jones was referring to today, you can find us at sumislaser.com. And then to find out specifically about the Vita bed, that address is vita.sumislaser.com. And we look forward to uh, next month and another exciting show. But we thank you all so much for your time. And we'll talk to you again real soon. Take care. Thank you for joining us on Laser Life Insights. This show is brought to you by Sumus Medical Laser, revolutionizing laser therapy to heal with the power of light. For more information, go to sumuslaser.com.